Hey, what are you doing? Yo, appreciate you, fam. Thanks for watching. Look, Cold War. Ooh, it's a fun game. But damn, that SBMM is fierce, boy. I thought Modern Warfare was bad. No. Oh, hell no. Nah. What is going on, Savage here? Today's video, we're going to be covering teamwork again because, well, everyone lacks teamwork, apparently. Guys, no matter how bad you are at the game, if you guys can form a consistent basis of teamwork, you guys will be able to pull off wins more than you guys ever even dreamed of. Whether you want to play aggressive, whether you want to play slow, it doesn't matter. As long as your teamwork is together, you guys should be able to solidify at least a few wins a day. But before we get into the video, if you haven't already, make sure you subscribe to the channel, join the Wolfpack today. Also, leave a like on the video. Let's get this video to 1,000 likes. And also, if you haven't already, follow me over on Facebook Gaming, where we did accept partnership over there. But anyway, we're going to be talking about teamwork. And of course, I'm going to try to go in depth with gunfights as well and explain what the players we're spectating are doing wrong, what they're doing right, as well as the enemies on the other side of the crosshairs. But without further ado, let's go ahead and dive into the video. You know, I'm kind of curious if I can actually spectate an entire match with no headset on. That means giving you guys real-time strategy without using audio, which is pretty crucial because that's how you make a lot of decisions. Maybe another video. Let me know in the comments below if you'd like to see how well I do at that or how bad I do at that. I'd like to find out. Let me know in the comments, boys. Anyway. Here I am doing what I do best. Like a damn savage. I don't let people kill me. I'd rather do it myself. All right, here we are. And I'm wearing a hat because I forgot to shake my head. And it looks ridiculous. Here we are spectating. Holy crap, this poor bastard. Um, Curly E-frame. E-F-frame. I'm going to call him Curly. Here we are spectating Curly. And he is in an unfortunate position of being in a solo trio, right? All right, so footsteps below us doors have opened two enemies possibly definitely there's one don't worry about the execution right now play the life all right or go for the execution i gotta pop a reload they're probably gonna bum rush you they didn't they didn't all right so now we have a building right here that we can really utilize shit and work right this that building's really a nice building to work should you not have died so fast now as you see, there was another set of doors right there. He could have easily gone out and rotated around the enemies and come up from the bottom. Um, but instead, he just posted a barricade and he sat still, right? He just sat there. And again, the moment you guys freeze up and you're in a 1v3, 1v2, or even a 1v1, that moment that you hesitate is the moment the team will take to capitalize onto you. And that's exactly what happened. The guy got on the second floor from the outside, came in through the door, and la-di-da, that's all there was to it. In a position like that, you guys need to leave the building. Don't just sit there watching the staircase. If there's multiple entrances and multiple ways for someone to get into your building, especially on a second floor, you got to play the building. You got to bust out of windows, bust out of doors, at least move your position because where you last killed the enemy, there's a chance that enemy pinged you. And if he pings you, guess what? That's exactly where the enemies are going to look when they bust in through doors. So even if you're going to stay on the second floor, at least rotate to the other side and watch from a different angle. I definitely recommend jumping out of some windows and trying to outplay the enemy. But again, stop hesitating, stop freezing up. So now, unfortunately, Curly and his squad are dead. Well, he might have a gulag. Never mind. He's dead. Yep, they're dead. Dead, 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 dead. Here we are now. All right, let's see if I pronounce this. Here we are spectating L... Sierra, 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 Sierra. All right, but we have a cluster strike. We have you know, fifty-seven hundred dollars as a team. We need to go ahead and get our teammates back. What are we doing though? That's very, very weird. We left the buy station, right? I don't think they like their teammate that much. He may be a random, and they're just like, you know what? Screw that kid. Oh, oh, we're going to another one. We're going to another one. But why waste time, right? We're already at the buy station. We're right next to it. We just killed the team in there. So why waste the time? By the time we made it over here to get to the helicopter, your teammate could already be already be on the ground with y'all. Again, time management. Start utilizing the map to your advantage. If you see a buy station next to you, why would you go all the way over to the next one, right? But here they are right now going. I'm going to be 100% honest. I don't know what they're doing. Bunker, maybe? Looks like they're going bunker. I'm not sure exactly what Orange is doing in this position. I don't think. I don't think he's really sure what he's doing. No, neither.
All right, here we are. All right, but we cleared the bunker, and now we're sitting on some really good money. We've got, uh, you know, almost $30,000. We have a vehicle driving next to us. All right, he got out of the vehicle, which is very odd, and he's looking right at our faces, and he's crouch walking, of course. He's got a teammate to the right-hand side, too, that we're not paying attention to, but fortunately, our teammate's paying attention. So if you're in the enemy's... So this is why lobbies die so fast. Holy shit, what the hell did we just witness? Normally these are like how to get better at COD videos, but this one I might just title Common Sense. Guys, don't take a helicopter and ram it to a tree. That's just, duh, right? I mean, oh my God. You physically can't make this shit up. And you know the funny thing about it? I bet you this kid's killed me before. All right, here we are finally. Hey, here we are finally in a helicopter. We got team on the map and here we are shooting at them, blazing them down. Good shots, man. Now the helicopter's sitting a little idle right now. I'm not really a fan of that. Guys, if you're gonna utilize the helicopter strat, you wanna keep the helicopter mobile. I cannot stand when someone's flying me around the map and they, they end up just sitting still, just hovering, right? Because what happens? You get tapped in the head and you're dead. So try to maintain your mobility if you're in a helicopter because you could end your entire team's life. But it worked out. He got it down. And for some reason, he's turning his entire back to the enemy team. Green's pushing in. Blue is... I don't know what Blue's doing. Distracting him, maybe. Who knows? But this needs to be time we push in and get some kills. I don't know what we're shooting at. I mean, there's really no tips I can give you guys on how to get better aim. The thing about aim is just practice, honestly. If I sat here, you know, and a perfect example is Cold War. I played Cold War for the first four hours and I uninstalled that bitch. I said, no, thank you. And then I was like, you know what, Savage? You need to man the hell up. And I played it again for a solid eight hours after that. And now I'm an absolute animal at it. Um, and, it and, and, and with saying that, it just comes down to practice, man. You guys just have to practice the movement and develop that muscle memory. And you have to do it consistently. Battle Royales in general are not one of those types of games that you can just pick up and be a god at and then abandon it for six months and come back and be a god again. It's just not. You're going to lose your mojo. I, I, I'm not going to lie. I'm be 100% honest with you. I'm going to play this game right after this because these lobbies seem very, very fun. Okay. And by fun, I mean I could kill these guys a lot. And that seems like a great idea. But I don't, I have no idea what was happening. Usually I can kind of use my common sense to kind of analyze what's going on, but this is just crazy. We've got, we've got just shit popping off everywhere. Dude, El, El Swervo, my man loves bailing out of helicopters. That's all we've really seen him do. Oh shit. Like, like I said, unfortunately, I'm, I'm kind of stumped. This analyzation, I'm a little stumped on. Because I really don't know what the hell's happening. I really don't. There, there's a teammate over here. There's a teammate down there. There's a teammate over here. There's an enemy up there. There's an enemy. I don't know what the hell's going on. There's really no teamwork going on in this. Everyone's just kind of playing for themselves. And now we're getting sniped. I'm assuming the tower. You might want to get off this rooftop. You're gonna get. You're gonna join your friend in the uh, in the misery he's he's feeling. Oh, we got another trio. Hell yeah. We have another trio squad. We have a teammate down who's actually safe. Oh, he's got self res. I mean, I definitely would have run over there and, and saved the self res, but. That's neither here nor there. All right, let's 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 just pay attention to what's happening right now because I've got to pause it. I'm trying really hard to not pause it a lot, right? I want to pause it minimum. But dude, I just, there's just so much shit happening. We got to stop, okay? Look, you got, to pay, you got to pay attention. You guys have to pay attention. If you ever feel the sense of panic, look at your mini-map. Your mini-map can answer so many questions that you guys are asking yourselves. It could solve so many problems that you're having. So let's rewind. I don't want to rewind too much. Let's rewind to here, right? Your teammate's down. Instantly, you're in a position to be able to rotate around, vault off of this, and save him. Yes, you're going to lose the ability to get back up here. That's fine, um, because you're going to want to fight these guys regardless, right? But you want to save your teammate the money of wasting the self-res. And since a lot of you guys are new to this game, and a lot of you guys may not know this, I'm going to go ahead and say it. This may be a savage, duh, moment. But look, again, for newer players, if your teammate is down, and he's popping himself with a self-res, you can actually run to him and finish him off. That way he'll still have a self-res. 
Now, again, that's pretty common knowledge, but again, a lot of players are getting into the game. So I, want to, so I wanted to go ahead and just explain that. Now, also with saying that, you notice he, he, he's, he's kind of he's kind of lost. And I'm not hating on him, I'm just uh, observations. We've actually got two guys under us, one guy above us floating in, right? And we'll see him in a second. People start shooting and he looks, I don't know, I don't know where he's looking. I really don't, and I'm not hating again. So we need to utilize this opportunity to look off the edge, shoot down the enemy and get the kills. I want you guys to see, oh weird. How did I know they were there? Because the UAV told me they were there. This is easy double kill. First off, you pick the guy closest to you. Boom. When he goes down, he can't really crawl anywhere. Then I'll pick up the next guy. And then you and your homeboy could jump down and finish the last dude that's on the other side of the tents. Easy one, two, three combo. Take him out, man. Get him gone. We got one down, we have two enemies left, and your, your, your teammate needs to get off that ledge. He needs to find a better spot or go prone. The last thing he needs to do is get downed again. All right, we're jumping off. Now, the last thing we do is run into the open. He's basically just put himself vulnerable from all angles. He needs to play near cover, hug the wall, push the tents, maintain movement utilizing cover. Unfortunately, your teammate, they go down and you need a close range weapon in this fight. You are not gonna outshoot a decent player who's got an MP5 or an MP7 with a Kilo and a VLK. I hate to tell you guys that. But Savage, you're, you're wrong. You're absolutely wrong. In my lobbies, I can, I can out. No, stop it. As you improve and you get into better lobbies, I'm telling you right now, the goats that we play against that use MP7s, MP5s, they don't miss shots. And guess what happens if they don't miss a shot close range? SMGs shoot faster, so it's gonna take you out faster and you're not gonna be able to get your shots off. I don't care what you say. So in that situation, you need to switch your weapons. Utilize the right weapon for the right fight. And I know a lot of players are a one trick wonder. And what I mean by that is you have one gun that you're good with and everything else is kind of meh. But you need to start practicing with SMGs, start practicing with snipers, start practicing with ARs, kind of broaden your horizon and get out of your, get out of your box, get out of your comfort zone, get better. That way, if you fall into certain situations you're uncomfortable with, you'll be more comfortable because you've already experienced it. You know what I'm saying? All right, but here we go again now. I mean, yo, L's doing a, doing pretty decent. He's got seven kills, all right? It's not the greatest, but it's definitely not shit. So I'll give him props there. Now in this position here, it looks like the circle's gonna finish towards Corey or above military, which are one of my favorite endings because it all comes down to positioning and rotations and, and cover and hills and trees and buildings. And I love shit like that because to me, that's what BRs really are about. All right, we've got an enemy marked. We only see one enemy run into the building. So this is a good sign. Now he, he may have teammates already there as well. We're not sure, but we are pushing a known 2v1. It could be a 2v2 or 2v3. So again, even though you only see one enemy, always play it like there's more. But for now, we're gonna use the knowledge that we have and just go ahead and assume it's 2v1. Now, the thing that's concerning to me is you have a teammate who's now down, but you have a teammate who went off on his own. Again, guys, if you're playing a team-based game, I don't care if you're playing with a random squad or not, you guys gotta stick together. The last thing you want to do is have your teammates waste their time and waste their money to buy you back. And the next thing you know, you're dead again, because I guarantee you, they're probably not going to buy your ass back again. Teamwork makes the dream work. It's not just a saying, it's the truth. You guys need to start playing as a squad. Now we have a good position. We have the high ground on this team. The problem with just playing the high ground is it's going to be a lot slower, a lot more passive. And if you're fine with that, go ahead and outweigh this enemy because he's going to have to rotate, right? He's going to have to move from his compound before you will. And you have the high ground and advantage and boom, just like that easy wipe. I'm not sure exactly why he's crouched slow peeking. Just kind of doing this little time, because again, even though you can't see around the corner, they can still see your shoulder. They can still see some of your torso. They can still see some of your head. Parts of your body do stick out, even if you don't think they do. So if you guys are going to peek, you want to peek fast. You don't want to just slow peek. You want to make sure you're moving and maintaining movement very quickly and make it harder for the enemies to shoot you. If I was in that enemy's position, I wouldn't have sat there slow peeking and let that enemy shoot me in the face. I would have just kind of quick peeked, baited some shots, and rotated around the other side of the building, started shooting at the enemy. The moment he started blazing back, rotate in the building, get in the high window and start shooting at him, change my position and get more shots in the enemy. That way it does a couple things. One, I can break his plates and keep wasting his plates away and hopefully he'll run out eventually and I can an easy kill. Two, I'm not just sitting in the same exact spot to where they can just pre-aim a corner, wait for me to repeat. Three, I'm maintaining different positions, which confuses the enemy, right? And also I'm doing it quickly. So I'm not just vulnerable target. He may shoot me once or twice, but even if he does, I'm going to break away from that corner as fast as I can and rotate somewhere else. So again, guys, when you're in combat and you're near a building, make sure you're utilizing all the corners and all the windows and all the, all the doorways of the building to engage in fights with the enemy. Now we have another team marked at 
uh, this house in front of us. For some reason, El Ciervo is laying prone and bailing from the fight. Now, Blue seems like he wants to engage, and I love the idea of Blue engaging. But uh, El said no. He said, I'm good, fam. I'm good. I'm just going to stare at this dot and get shot in the face a couple times. I'm going to bail off, no cover at all, and hopefully just make it. Start plating up, waste a couple plates, no big deal on this one. Hell yeah. And now Blue is by himself. Now Blue's doing his shit. Blue's got it down. And we're sitting here looking at helicopters, marking the choppers, doing it at whatever it is we want. If your teammate gets a knock, forget what you were doing. Rotate to your teammate and get the help, man. Your guy can't sit here 1v3 by himself. I mean, he probably can, but why, why risk it, right? The moment he engages, you see him shooting or you see him looking at an area and he's pinging it, you need to divert your direction to look where he's shooting at because he got the down, he got the execute. So now it's a 2v2 at best. So it's an even fight, right? So go ahead and utilize that to your advantage and, and capitalize on this. But we do have the enemy in front of us. Easy shots, just shoot the enemy. Just shoot, he's literally sitting on the corner. Just shoot him, just shoot him, just shoot him. Okay, we got we got the we got the armor broken. He may have been able to get a kill if he would have shot sooner, but hey, again, armor broken now. Savage, I don't know when to push. I don't know how to how to decide if I should push an enemy or not. Well, first things first, if they have broken armor, even at this distance, I would work my way closer to the enemy. And stop shooting people that are irrelevant to the fight, right? This guy is nothing. The savage, he's a free kill. We're on a mountain completely exposed with an entire other mountain looking right at us, and an enemy we just pissed off. Why are we not near cover? Why are we fighting a guy who literally is not worried about us at all? That free kill is going to get us killed. So again, we got the armor broken on the guy in the house. As you guys are fighting, you need to move closer to the enemy because closer fights is better for you, especially when you break their armor because you're going to have to be plating up. And if you're close to him, guess what? You just mess him up when he's mid plating, right? We sit back and we keep breaking his armor and we keep our distance and we break his armor again. And we keep our distance like, yeah, we may eventually win the fight, but what's going to happen? He's gonna waste our armor too. Not to mention, we're just making a lot of noise and we're probably gonna get shot from another enemy. What's gonna happen now is we're gonna be so focused on other people, we're gonna get another fight that these guys may have an opportunity to kill us or while we're sitting here tunnel vision on this fight for too long, another team may have an opportunity to shoot us in the side and third party us, right? I hate third party in this game. It's annoying as hell, but it is what it is. But if you guys put yourself in a position to get third partied, meaning you're fighting the same team for like five minutes, you deserve to get third partied. You really do. That's why I always tell you guys to win your fights, fight fast, fight quickly, because you don't want to give another team the option to hear your gunshots and rotate to you and and or kill you. I don't know why. I don't know why slide canceling and ADSing irritates me as much as it does, but it really does. <laughs> All right, so I'll give it to him. He realized his aim and accuracy isn't that good, so he went ahead and utilized the railing to mount on, which is awesome. But I, for some reason, again, El Ciervo loves pissing people off and running away with his back to him, right? We've now shot at the house on the hill. We now shot at people in the sky. We now shot at the fire station. Not only are we turning our back to the enemy we just shot at, but we're leaving circle. All right, so here we are looking at the mountain. There's an enemy to his left over here on the screen under the mini map, and we're still just staring at God knows what. I'm not sure exactly what he's doing, but this is really just, again, there's no reason to ADS if you don't see an enemy. I'm gonna keep shoving this down your throat because holy crap, that's all people do in this game. All right, so we now killed a random guy on the outskirts of the map. Now your teammate needs to get safe, and again, we've pissed off fire station, so you might wanna provide some sort of cover for your teammate to cross safely. But we're not, because screw teamwork, and we're gonna go ahead and leave this position to get to another one now. This is a shitty position. This is not a good decision at all. I would have played the wall and tried to fight everything on the west side of the map first and then rotated in. But now what we're doing essentially is we know there's a teammate to our west because they're at fire station. So now they're behind us. And because there's a buy station right here and bunkers was safe as of like three seconds ago, I'm gonna assume there's an enemy team on this wall and or by this vehicle that's up here by the helipad. Um, so again, horrible position. And not to mention when the circle does rotate, because it will, I doubt it's going to hug us again, right? Twice in a row, no chance. So when the circle does shift somewhere else, we have a wide open area. This little build right here, that's it. That's it for cover. You got a couple pebbles, a couple twigs sticking out the ground. That's it, no cover. So again, I'll be playing the wall and focus on the team to the west. That way I can make sure my back is clear and then rotate inward. And not to mention the teammates nowhere near us. We're sitting here by ourselves. Our teammates looking at a fire station. Oh, weird. Oh, 
Oh my God. And now people like, people in the comments are like, Savage, how do you, how do you predict things? I don't have a superpower. I'm not some special like brainiac. Y you learn how people play and you kind of just base your assumptions off how they play, right? When you play a strategy game, you're going to assume that the enemy teams are going to utilize strategy as well. And again, because of the buy station and the bunker and it being on the edge of the circle, I assumed there was a team there. Um, I think there was only one. At least that's all we saw. All right, so now... <laughs> Hello. Now we're in a position. Um, you can't see the ammunition because I'm covering it. Sorry, guys. This is the best I can do. He's got 60 bullets in this gun. And uh, he needs to conserve his ammo. So the last thing he needs to do right now is pick this fight. It's the last thing he needs to do. Um, for a couple reasons. One, this team has to push across an open street, right? This area is not safe. This street is also not safe. So eventually, these guys are going to have to cross. And when they do cross, that's when I would utilize this time to knock them. What's gonna happen now is he's looking right at him. His his crosshair is almost dead center mass, so we already know he's gonna shoot and waste his ammunition. He's down on a 39 bullets and he solo trios. So what that means is you better hope that 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 your secondary is good enough uh, to take out a trio squad, and it's not. So again, here we are again turning our back to the enemy who is out of position and needs to get safe. So we're allowing the enemy who's out of position to run across an open field, uncontested, to get safe and eventually come behind us. Very bad play. Very bad play. Okay, now we're also... Oh, he, he got shot before I could say it. Also, we're sitting here looting our teammates' stuff. Um, why are we not just sitting next to the wall? Why are we backed up with our entire body exposed to the military base? Why? Answer to the question, please. Thank God we got a gas mask. And now we're... Alright. We're going to stare at them and not ADS and shoot back. We're just going to look at them and let them hit us a couple times and waste some more plates. Sick. And again, we have that other team that's probably going to end up pushing our west-hand side. So, so now we've put ourselves in a position to be pinched. Exactly what I said the first time uh, our homeboy died and exactly what I'm saying right now uh, with this dude. I mean, at least, at least they're playing consistent together, right? They're both doing the same thing, honestly. Look at the mini map. There's a dot over here on the edge of the circle. We should probably use this wall to push the dot on the edge of the circle and engage in some fights that we can actually win. Staring this way is not a good idea because again, we're vulnerable from our back, right? We need to start picking fights that we can win. We need to start, oh, oh, we're staring at him again, not shoot back. We see the glare, not ADSing one time, not shooting a single bullet, just staring at him again, sick. Uh, we're gonna do it again, there it is, sniper. And we're gonna stare, not shoot, awesome. We're gonna bail out of the fight instead, sick. So here we are working our way to the team that we should have shot that was behind the tree earlier. They're going to be somewhere over here. I'm sure they're not down there. You can you can divert your vision again. When I saw the shot on the mini map, I'm going to assume it was them because it came from this direction, right? So there's somewhere over here by the bounty. There's somewhere on this wall. And we're just leaving ourselves vulnerable. All right. Oh, shit. There he is. Look at that, dude. In game, you need to start really using cover. Guys, use cover. Start moving from item to item, right? He should be behind this. He, he should be working his way closer to here, utilizing this as cover. Now we're sitting in the open with a clear line of fire. This is just poor planning. This is not paying attention. Again, this is exactly where that blip on the minimap was a few seconds ago. So we knew he was here because we paid attention to the minimap. He did not, however, and now he's going to die because of it. And he doesn't even see the enemy. Oh, my God. Oh, 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 shit. Rest in peace. Yeah, it's the same. It was the same squad, actually. This is the exact same guys that uh, he was staring at. So they ended up killing him. So again, don't pinch yourself between enemies. If you shoot at a team, make sure you finish the fight. Why would you sit here and piss people off one at a time? El, El Sierra did the same shit with three different teams, and then uh, his homeboy, you know, basically mimicked them. So in this position here, there's really nothing that Yuki Boy could do and his teammate. Honestly, they're in a bad position. Uh, they didn't rotate soon enough. They waited too long. And now they're going to have to go out in the open. Again, look, there's nothing on the map. Who's got the favor? The people in fire range. They got the best position. The best position. Anybody else on the map is dead. It's all about position, guys. It's all about position. There's really no, there's really no tactics to that one. There's no way to... How do I get out of a bad position? If you wait too long, guys, you can put yourself in a position to never be able to fight yourself out of a bad position. Right? Does that make sense? Oh, we have a truck driver. Sick. Here we go with Big Bertha. I don't know what he's doing. Nice sticky brother. Ooh. And GG.
thank you for watching i really hope you enjoyed the video if you did do not forget to subscribe to the channel leave a like and follow me over on facebook gaming you have a good one and until next time keep on improving thank you for watching make sure you check out one of these two videos over here and as always subscribe by clicking the button over there i really hope you guys enjoy the content and until next time boys good luck in warzone